webinar has started and it is recording. Let me look to participants. Hello and welcome everybody. I see uh, we do have a few folks coming in. So thanks everybody to join for joining. Um, we are gonna just take a few moments here to get our council members situated as panelists on Zoom. Um, we have a little process of doing that. So just give us a few minutes, let people roll in and we'll work on some technical things. And then we will get started once uh, we have a quorum, which is three council members. And we've got two so far. And shout out to Lynn Kuttner, who is actually doing that right now. She is our techie and our advisory council. Uh, we've been calling her affectionately our bouncer. And so she's helping to make sure that all the council members get the right permissions and that everybody's where they need to be. And so she's doing that right now. I heard the shout out to Lynn part. Yes. Thank you, Lynn. I think you were in transition, Brian, um, in the promotion. So we're just doing tech support. This whole human experience, everything is just in transition. Right, you are, Brian. Do we want me to be able to come on camera during facilitation? Yep, we're we're working on that right okay. now too. Um, yep. So just with all of our new structures and stuff, uh, there will be this will probably become a regularity of just a few moments of us just getting everybody situated. It mm -hmm. gives us a little bit of structure and lets us protect our space and make sure makes sure that we can kind of vet who's doing what so that we don't have any recurrent incidences uh, as has happened in June. Um, but again, thank you all for coming. We do have a quorum. And so we will get started here in a moment. Um, I'll just, I don't want to rush Lynn. So I'll give her a few minutes. We should have plenty of time today. No public comments were submitted ahead of time. And so we will be able to utilize that time for further discussion and agenda items. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, if you want to make public comment, you do have to um, submit by one o'clock the day before on our public comment form, which is on our website. It's also in my email communications. You can always let me know if you need help accessing those. And we invite public comment. So panelists should have the ability to turn on your video camera if you would like. We're in the process of doing a lot of clicking boxes. Hi, Kaylee. Hi, Stephanie. Wonderful. Great. Great turnout. Hi, Stephanie. Oh, you are you are muted, but don't worry about it if you drive. So be be safe. Okay, cool. Great, great. All right, welcome in everybody. Welcome all guests. Appreciate you all coming. 
Uh, we do have a quorum. Our chairs are now made panelists and folks can share their videos. So come on cam come off camera if you'd like to, but you don't have to come as you are. Um, we can, I think, go ahead and get started. I'll turn it over to the chairs to start it and then I'll run through our agenda items and expectations. Great, thank you so much, Corey and Denver Human Services. I'm Brian B and I am a co-chair along with Lindsay and a voting member. Um, will you be sharing the slides, Corey? That's kind of my, what happens next? I don't know, whatever Corey puts on the screen, that's what happens next. Yep. This is uh this is what happens next. So yep, I'm just sh sharing the screen now. Um, could I? Oh boy, sorry. My all my screens are now dancing. So give me a second, uh, because they like to do that. Um, I'm trying to get it so I can see everybody. Gotcha. Yeah, and we are able to see the front slide for the council. Great. Today. Wonderful. Okay. Um. Well then. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. So here's our agenda for today. Um, welcome. We will go through our meeting expectations as we do, always do every day. And so I'll do a meeting overview for the first 10 minutes. Um, this is also when we kind of get our technology and stuff going, which we've done. So thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, everybody, for helping with that. Um, everybody should be able to come off camera now, but feel free to ping uh, one of us, if you can't, or if you're having any tech issues during the meeting, it'll be a little hard for me to respond because I have all the screens going right now. So um, if you wouldn't mind maybe reaching out to Lynn or Michaela, that would be great. Um, we'll go through our updates as we do every meeting. I have an update to give everybody that I think you'll be interested in, but then also council members will be able to give updates and we'll hear from uh, the Community Advisory Council if there are updates from there. Michelle won't be with us today, but Kisley, if you wouldn't mind maybe giving a little update, if there is one, um, we can do that then. Then we'll have a member spotlight for our friend Stephanie. Um, she will have five minutes about 125 to kind of present on who she is and help us build the community and collaboration between each other, build our connections. Um, and then, we will discuss uh, our public comment policy, which we have updated that we've been kind of using here. We wanna make sure that we can just kind of get a council vote, council approval on that. If there's any feedback or additions to it, we wanna talk about that. So we'll do that at 1.30. Then we'll also talk about the meeting location and our structure. So we switched to webinar recently and we wanna invite conversation from the council to see if that's working, if we wanna consider alternatives to that and all that. We'll have break at 1.50. We'll go through and talk about landlord and builder assessment after that. So this is your chance to kind of di digest and process with each other what we talked about last time. And Jordan Mulholland will help out with that conversation. She has some additional information to bring regarding past uh, recommendations that the council has already made that might overlap. And then we'll have public comment. However, there are no, is no public comment. And so we can use those 20 minutes there for any of these other uh, agenda items, which feels kind of nice that we aren't so packed up with that now. Um, and again, a reminder to everyone, if you want to make public comment, please submit our on our written public comment page ahead of time during these agenda items that are outside of public comment. We Those are reserved for specific discussion and agenda items from our council members uh, and any guest presenters if they're ever um, present which today it'll only be myself and Jordan as kind of guest presenters. Uh, and then we'll finish off the meeting with uh, forecasting, just talking about what we're going to do in September. The year is moving about moving by really quick. So just before we get started, we are the ideas team. This is the Ideas Advisory Council, which stands for Intellectual and Developmental Disability Equitable Access to Services. Our mission is to partner with the community to manage local taxpayer dollars dedicated for Denver residents with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We strive to make Denver an inclusive community where people with IDD feel welcomed, valued, and empowered to live the lives they envision for themselves. The council here that meets once a month publicly is comprised of Denver residents with lived experience with IDD. We meet monthly to discuss all sorts of topics relevant to Denver residents with intellectual and developmental disabilities, 
and using community feedback, individual knowledge, and expert presentations, the council provides recommendations to Denver Human Services about the best way to pr prioritize funds and programs. Just in, in these public meetings, please be respectful of everybody attending the meeting. That also means being respectful outside of meetings. Whatever we talk about, however, however we vote, please don't let that um, be any reason to kind of have an argument or anything like that. Please be nice. Please uh, follow the rules and, and be in community with each other. Uh, while we're going, please make sure to mute yourself um, and then raise your hand and unmute to speak. When you are speaking, it would be great as a point of accessibility to introduce yourself as you are speaking so that those who may not be able to see you or might not have access to camera uh, can know who is talking. Our attendees will not be able to speak unless uh, they raise their hand first and then we, our, our tech team, gives you the permission to speak. And again, that is really only during public comment uh, periods of which this time nobody has submitted ahead of time. So at this time, only council members will be speaking with each other. Uh, as we move through agenda items, please do your best to stay on topic. We always have a lot to do. And so it's great if we can uh, keep conversations according to our agenda. If there ever is a topic that we want to bring up or move our conversation towards, we can do that. Um, we can either schedule that for another meeting or see if we can find time um, from extra minutes or something like that. All meetings are public and recorded. So everything that I've been saying is recorded and is going to be posted on our recording as well as encapsulated in our meeting minutes, which is on our website. Chats are also posted publicly. So um, I will want to remind people that um, we need to set your chat to everyone first. And so to do that, you open the chat box, should be on the bottom. Yeah, somewhere on the bar. I think it looks different for me right now, but I think towards the right, usually you click that chat button, you go to uh, where it says two, and then you want to make sure you select everyone. Uh, if we ever have a chat that um, is not made publicly, that's okay. I can copy and paste it so it is made public, but we want to make sure that everything that we're doing is transparent and noticeable by the public. And those chats will be posted as a... Um, to our recordings and everything like that. Please remain safe during meetings. If you have to drive, that's fine, but pull over. You, you're, you're welcome to leave the meeting and then rejoin it when you're at a safer space. Uh, don't, don't bother with turning your camera on or voting or anything like that while you're driving. Be safe, uh, follow all laws, make sure that you're, you're fully engaged in what you're doing so that you're not getting hurt or anything like that. And as always, have fun. So um, with all that, I think I can turn it over to Lindsay and Brian to take it from here. Great, thank you so much, Corey. Anybody else find it hilarious that there's like 97 roles and then 98 is, and have fun. <laughs> Hopefully that helps us make light of some important and serious things. Uh, before we go to the minutes that you are sharing now, uh, Corey, are we doing introductions of um, chairs and voting members? Brian, you are wonderful. Yes. Why don't we begin yeah. with introductions? I realized that my slide deck, I, um, I had removed that because we didn't have time for that last month, but I would like to get back on that for this cadence. Um, so... Uh, all chairs and council members will introduce themselves. Uh, the rest of us, if we would like to introduce ourselves, we can do so in the chat. So right now, just introduce yourselves uh, as council members, and we'll just um, we'll just roll through. Brian, if you wouldn't mind maybe calling on people as you see them in, in your gallery view. Does that sound? Um, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Great. Would you pull down the screen share while we're doing that? With sure. Minutes? Thank you so much. So hi folks, I'm Brian B, middle-aged white guy, balding, gray beard, uh, zooming in from home today, and I'm a voting member. I'm an autistic artist advocate. Um, Lindsay, would you please come say hello? Hi, my name is Lindsay Westmiller, council co-chair, and I'm a middle-aged woman wearing a striped shirt, long black hair, work with the Area Agency on Aging. Um, 
And I will pass to Kaylee. Hi, yeah, my name is Kaylee Day. I'm a voting member of the council. Um, I'm a white woman in my 30s with dyed dark red hair and clear framed glasses. I'm wearing a tank top and you can see my messy office behind me. Um, professionally, I am an advocate with Advocacy Denver. And personally, I have a brother who lives um, with IDD, who lives with our parents over in Denver County. I think that's everything. So I will go to Beth. Hello, <laughs> I'm Beth. I'm a voting member. Um, I'm female. I like to say I'm in my mid thirties, but as of next week, technically I won't be anymore. <laughs> um, my son has multiple disabilities, which is how I'm connected with this community. And I live in Denver, that's about it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Chris? So Chris and fellow, you're welcome to turn on your microphone and come say hi. Hi, Chris and Jacob here, just tuning in. Right on. Chris, did you want to say anything more? You want to add anything? No. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna say hi. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Stephanie, say hello. No, Stephanie, would you like to come say hi? Hi everyone, Stephanie Gross here off camera for about another five minutes. I am a voting council member. Um, I am a 40 something um, white uh, female and professionally speaking, I am the founder and director of Move Through Yoga. We bring adaptive yoga to individuals with diverse um, cognitive and physical disabilities. So it is a pleasure to be here and a part of this awesome council. And Brian, I have to say the tie is on point. I do love the knot and it, it just looks actually very professional on camera. So well done. Thank you so much, Stephanie, right on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just have to show off the tie now because it's got drums on it. So, um, Kisley, would you like to come say hello? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Kisley Blue, and I'm the Mill Levy Program Manager here at Rocky Mountain Human Services. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a Black woman in my early 40s. I'm here in my home office wearing a Black shirt, got some braids, and I am a non-voting member. Thank you so much. So I'm not seeing... Um, other voting members to call on. Uh, can you corroborate, uh, Corey? All the voting council members have said hello. I believe I believe that everybody has yeah okay. introduced themselves. And then Michaela and Lynn and uh, Jordan, you're doing that later or is it, or now? Are you, it's up to you if you want to come say hello, Michaela. You're welcome to. I saw you put it in the chat as well. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. I, I did throw my information in the chat, um, but Lynn and I, um, Lynn and Jordan, I can, can say hi briefly. Um, my name is Michaela Hennig. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Ideas Program Manager. Um, Beth, I am also no longer in my mid-30s as of last week, um, and I am happy to be here in front of a virtual Red Rocks background, and I'll kick it over to Lynn. Hi everyone, Lynn Kuttner, she, her program, pronouns, um, part of the ideas team, one of the program administrators and uh, part of the tech support team for the advisory council. Um, I, long hair, glasses and uh, sitting in the office, I think Jordan. Hi y'all, uh, my name is Jordan. I use she, her pronouns um, and I'm wearing a green, long sleeve shirt 
um, blurry background, brown hair in my late 20s. Um, and it's great to be here. Oh, and I also work for the ideas program as a program administrator. Right on. And I just feel like it's important to note that Corey, Brian B, Jacob, and Jordan are all greening today. So the green, the green power. And that's what I mean by have fun. Like we've, we've got some important and some serious things to do here. And as I put in the chat, uh, Corey mentioned, uh, come as you are, which makes me think of a song because everything makes me think of a song. And I think one of how we are right now is that we all had to go through a bit of distress tolerance just to do the click, click, clicks to get here. Um, and even the folks that help hold space for this. Uh, that even have created some of those clicks are also having to tolerate the distress of administrating. And so we are co-creating. This is this is community. Welcome in. And thank you everyone that said hello. Uh, voting members and, and Department of Human Services, Denver Human Services staff, um, Kisley. If you want to say hello in the chat, you can do so as well, I believe. Is that right, Corey, that uh, um, others have access to the chat? besides panelists? Yeah, so just, okay. to, just to let you know there. Uh, panelists, you will be able to use the chat. Attendees won't, and so everybody who's kind of watching us right now uh, won't be able to do that. But uh, panelists, all of you will, and that's all of our council members here. And so if you want to send messages, just make sure you, you switch over to everyone, and then all of the attendees will be able to see what you say. Um, so, right on. Yeah. So thank you guests for being here, even though there's we're not visually seeing you and you don't have access to the chat. You are important uh, because you are community as much as we are. We just happen to be voting members and that puts us on a different scale where we're, we have the ability to show our, um, turn our camera on. All right, next will be our first order of business. I just wanna say, first of all, you know, earlier Corey gave us a nice outline uh, thank you for that, Corey. We know you've been uh, diligent and busy with many things, even recently in the last week. So I appreciate you showing up in this space and doing your best. Um, when Corey did that overview of all the things that we're doing today, I just want to kind of anchor us or orient us that one main thing we're doing today is the builder's assessment or housing in Denver for people with IDD and this council getting a chance to say to Denver Human Services, here's what we think is important. So that's coming up. And that's kind of the main thing that we're doing today. And it's kind of been a while. We've had a lot of like presentations, but today's going to be this dialogue to do what this council is intended to do, which is share what we feel is a priority for Denver Human Services with folks with IDD in relation to housing. So that's coming up. Are you with me? All right. First order of business to approve the minutes from last month. So Corey, you may, uh, thank you, pull up that screen. And we ask voting members to vote in the chat, yes, no, or abstain from approval of the minutes from last month. Please take a moment to do that now. Brian, do we need to have a motion first and then vote in the chat or are we just voting in the chat? Um, yeah, thank usually you so we much. would um, just take a minute to see if anyone has any any changes that they want or any anything that might need to be edited or anything and then if not, we can leave it open for a motion to approve. That's why it takes a team, folks. Kaylee's right. Lindsay's right. Thank you. Lindsay's well, this next. is Kaylee, and I, assuming there's no changes anyone needs, um, I would motion to approve. I'll second the motion. All right. Thank you for keeping us orderly. And now we will do this vote in the chat.
So we're looking for six votes, yeah. if possible. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and if you're not able to vote now with access to the chat and stay safe, we can, uh, I believe we can continue with five votes. Can somebody corroborate my math? Okay, can we move forward with five? Yeah, okay, all right, excellent. Um, I believe Stephanie logged off right before you called for a vote, so. Oh, so I'll iterate that. Uh, we are asking. She for... voted. Okay. Oh, thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I don't see Beth. So, Beth, if you are available and have access to the chat, you can vote about the minutes. And if not, we can continue, even if you do not vote approval, yes or no, or abstain. Um, I just got a new, I'm going to do a technology thing for a moment. Uh, I'm going to talk to you, Corey. I just got a new camera and microphone, literally plugged it in moments before getting on this meeting. And there's some noise around me. I just wonder if, if that is coming in and interfering around with you guys. Are you hearing any? Ambience? No, you sound great. Yeah, we can see you, hear you, and it's all good. And now for my next number. No, oh, sorry. That's a different meeting. All right, uh, let's move on from the approval of the meeting minutes. And Michelle would typically be the one. So is this going to be Kisley that shares the Community Advisory Council Rocky Mountain Human Services report out? It I'm will be. Hi, everybody. Kisley Blue speaking from Rocky Mountain Human Services. I also was absent from our last um, CAC meeting that was held last Tuesday, but I do have the agenda that I can speak to. Um, so I know that what was on the agenda to discuss was um, our CAC recruitment and the recommendations. We received tons of interest that I think um, the, the group was just going to talk through um, who those candidates were and then provide the recommendations on who should um, be invited to join our, um, our council. And then we also finalized our um, client family directed funds sustainability recommendations. Um, and don't really have much um, to say from that, but I'm sure Michelle will be happy to give us an update on that. And um, last but surely not least, we discussed our 2025 community initiative pri priority area recommendations. As you guys all know, um, we're slotted to release our RFP, Mill Levy is slotted to release the RFP in October. And so we um, we discussed the, the priority funding areas with the CAC and, and asked for recommendation, recommendations for the um, priority funding areas. And so that's that's all I have to report for today. Excellent. Thank you. And I want to say a, a brief word to folks that are new. Uh, maybe you applied to be at this council and you're here today visiting. Uh, maybe you are in community member, you, you have an interest in folks with IDD, and you wonder what is RMHS and, and what is CAC and what is mill levy and what is... Now, many of us know this. We talk, and that's why we're here. We, we know this and we talk about it regularly. But if you are kind of new, Please give yourself some grace and some of us some grace too with our acronyms and our perhaps fast speech. And keep coming back if you feel like this is the right space for you and you'll learn. All right, let's move on to our next item. Understood, Beth. Glad you're with us. All right, we're now going to do some council updates on some current events or happenings related to this advisory council and Denver residents with IDD. Well, this is for voting members to say what's happening and what's coming up. Haley, please. Thank you, yeah, this is Haley. Um, so I have some pretty big, both exciting and sad news to share with the council and community today, and that's 
After 13 years as an advocate at Advocacy Denver, I am going to be starting my next chapter and will be working out of the Center on Developmental Disability um, in the University of Kansas. So I'm starting a new job um, on Thursday, so <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> um, while I'm sticking around in Denver, um, I'm diving into a role that is going to be pretty um, big and busy, and so I, I can't at this time um, commit to being able to attend council meetings every month. And so um, this will be my last official meeting as a council member. And I'll be resigning after the meeting, but definitely um, hope to stay connected to the council, to this community. Um, I love this work. It's, you know, I'm I'm part of this community since I was born into a family um, with disability. And so this is my life. And I've just really enjoyed being a part of this council for the last few years. Um, one of my proudest moments was definitely a few years ago when we made housing recommendations that we have started to see come to fruition through the Housing Navigator program, through these assessments being done. So I think it's kind of awesome that my last meeting will be another time for us to make recommendations around housing, which we know is one of the biggest issues for not just our community, but everyone in Denver. So I'm really proud of the work we do there and the impact we've made there. And yeah, I appreciate all of you and I'm going to Miss, miss being a part of this, but excited for the next thing. Haley helped build Ideas Advisory Council into what it is. Please join me in giving her a hoo-ha. We got a lot of love coming up in these little heart emojis and thumbs up and claps. And... I appreciate it. Thank you. Right on. Um, I'm going to take a moment. We're going to come back to more of you folks and your announcements and updates. But I'm going to take a moment to tie in two things. Kaylee says, goodbye, folks. This is my last meeting. And um, I thought, forgot what the other one was, but it was something that happened just before that. Um, we discussed in, in getting ready for this meeting today, we discussed that when people leave, we want to tell them, thank you. Thank you for um, being here at the Ideas Council. And uh, do you need any support in where you're going to your thing next and, and connecting? Oh, that was what it was. Um, Kisley mentioned that uh, they were bringing some people on board to the Rocky Mountain Human Services Community Advisory Council. And then we also are doing that here at Ideas. And we're thinking about, well, for those that don't come on board, how can we help them connect? And there's a lot of team members, thank you if you're one of them, to help um, recognize that our community folks that are applying, that are visiting, they're part of a pool of resources. We wanna, we wanna keep the uh, energy going. All right, other updates and announcements. If I might steal the mic, this is Corey speak, speaking, but I feel like what you were just talking about, Brian, is a good one for my update. Uh, it very much relates. Um, so as our council knows, we have been recruiting to fill uh, some of our vacant seats. And so we actually have approved appointments for four new council members who we are hoping will um, participate in their orientation in a few weeks here. Uh, as long as I can just get get things together with availability and all that. We are hoping that orientation will be in person here at Castro, which is 1200 Federal. And I invite all council members to come for that. I don't have the date yet because I need to um, coordinate with all the different uh, new appointees, but it would be a great opportunity for folks to kind of come and meet directly in person and connect with these new members, help welcome them on board and talk to each other and uh, keep building that community spirit that we have. Um, but we're very excited for the four of them to join us. Um, we think that they each bring their own unique set of advocacy and experience and personal great, um, just all kinds of things to this council. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. Um, with Kaylee's leaving, we will still have one vacancy open. Uh, but at that point, once once they are onboarded, and 
become available to come. We actually do have a few. Uh, we have one at least who's joining us today and listening in. Uh, but once they come in, come on board and start voting and everything like that, we'll be at uh, 10 with one one vacancy to open. And so we'll start recruitment for next year um, and planning and all that. So uh, once they come on, I would love it if people can welcome them in and make them feel great. Uh, I know it'll be a little bit of a shift for them to learn our processes and our structures and everything like that. So uh, it'd be good, nice if folks can welcome them in. That is awesome. So I invite you to join me for a hoo-ha because what Corey just said, four people joining this council, that's that's teamwork. That's community engagement. That's why we're here. We're here to do things like that. And as much effort as it took to get to this point where we could offer it, interview people, and then they could accept, um, there's still a lot more work to do to stay engaged meaningfully. You know, we're, we're each valued. We're learning and where we can be brave and safe to figure it out together. Other updates, happenings. Um, I just wanted to mention, Corey, that you had put your electronic hand up. And where it shows on my camera, the, the hand is the same color as maybe a cabinet or something behind you. And I, I just didn't realize that. So thank you for uh, unmuting and voicing up because I would not have seen that hand. Last call for announcements. Um, I have one that I'm going to try to go pull up here. Lynn, I was asking if you're able to make me uh, empower me to screen share for this announcement, but I can also put a link in the chat. Uh, there, I want to tell you folks about Inclusive Housing Coalition of Colorado, and in particular, an event that they have coming up. And we'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later. But here is the website for the uh, Inclusive Housing Coalition of Colorado, just put it in the chat, www.ihcc, Inclusive Housing Coalition of Colorado. And then they have an event coming up that uh, is free. And it's very much about what we're doing here today, which is uh, housing and IDD friendly. Um, my brain's not letting me talk and go find that. And uh, and and let's see, is the screen share? Yeah, and I can't screen share, but maybe we can figure that out for later. Um, first off, I want to ask the council something uh, to think about, and then we'll we'll talk more later. Do we want to invite this Inclusive Housing Coalition of Colorado to Ideas Council, perhaps next month, perhaps the following month, to share a bit about their work? We'll talk about that later. I'll ask that question again. And they have an event coming up, but I'm not able to quite pull it up and, and articulate that event. So maybe we'll do that. Or Jordan, you wanna do that? Yeah, I can, um, just cause Ideas has been helping. So a lot of this is fresh in my brain. So if, um, if it's helpful, um, the event is on October 28th um, and it's all day. It is um, breakfast and lunch will be provided. It is at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, and they're inviting at least 200 folks. Um, and so it's, it's going to be about, you know, all things related to housing for people with IDD, trying to bridge the gap between the housing world and the services world and, and have some really good conversations with, with the work that's happening and the, the contributors to it. Um, and so um, I believe registration opens on the 1st of September and we'll be sure to most certainly make sure everyone has access should you be interested in joining. Um, I know ideas will be there representing um, and we would love to have council members there as well. And if transportation is a barrier, just let us know and we can support you all in finding the right way to get there. Um, but yeah, um, uh, Brian, you, um, you're probably referring to the flyer that they've shared out. Yeah, and uh, although we put the website in the chat, I don't, it, 
I didn't see that that information is available on the front page of the website. Um, so perhaps we can get that flyer and pop that in the chat or disseminate it um, so that folks can have a, a chance to follow up um, besides listening what you just shared. For sure, we can um, maybe send that out um, after this call. Okay, okay. So I was asking about announcements and I was saying two things. One, there's a thing coming up and then Jordan just gave the details. I'll say it again. The 2024 Inaugural Neuroinclusive Housing Summit on October 28th, okay? Look for some email, perhaps from Corey, disseminating information about that. Um, and then the website is in the chat. And then also, this is a cool group of people doing great stuff. I'll ask later if, if this council would like to invite them to come speak. Last call for announcements or updates. Beth, please. Uh, this is what my phone call was about earlier. I'm really, really excited about it. So I, I, I just want to share. <laughs> um, Denver Public Schools, I don't know if it's just them or surrounding, but they passed I don't know what the law or just a policy within them, but ABA, OT, any kind of speech can come within the school to do therapies during non-academic um, things. So like lunch, like my son's going to get feeding therapy now. And instead of it being the 60 day evaluation and then approved and everything, it, it could be as little as 48 hours you can start getting therapy at school. So I am super, super stoked about that. They can go through his AAC device during recess. And I'm just, yeah, I'm elated. <laughs> Are you happy about this, Beth? A little bit. <laughs> right on, right on. That's Ideas Community Advisory Council at heart right there. That's that's why we're here and to, to share those kind of things. And Michaela, I saw you put your hand up and then down. Did you not have, some, did, did you have and then not have? Or was it Michaela? Maybe it was somebody else. Yeah, that was me. I'm sorry. This is Michaela Beth. I was meaning to give you hearts and instead I raised my hand. <laughs> hearts no. to you. It was a high five. Let's just we'll, we'll call it that. <laughs> it was a high five for Beth. All right. Updates, announcements, last call. All right. I think next we're doing a member spotlight. We are doing a member spotlight. So uh, this is a feature that has grown this year. We've all helped co-create this. Thank you for those of you that are willing to share your face and your voice. We invite to the microphone one of our voting council members, Stephanie Gross. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, Corey, for allowing me to have the platform to speak. Um, my name is Stephanie Gross. I am, again, sitting in my home office now, safe from communicating over uh, Zoom while driving. So um, I am the founder of Move Through Yoga, and I'm delighted to share with you guys just a little bit about Move Through Yoga's backstory and um, where it came from and, um, and how I got here, but also to share an event that... Um, I could use your help with, um, and I was going to speak to um, the last portion of our meeting with an event, but I figured I'd tie it all in seamlessly. So um, Move Through Yoga is um, a nonprofit that brings adaptive yoga to individuals with IDD, um, as well as physical disabilities. So um, the reason why we do what we do is we believe that um, all bodies, all minds deserve an opportunity to feel good in their mind and bodies, but also to have the social emotional learning that comes from being in a space with others who are moving and breathing through yoga and stillness. Um, we primarily provide direct services by going into schools. Um, and we also, um, uh, do trainings with day programs, camps, uh, educators, paraeducators, um, and um, really parents as well. Um, when we provide direct services, uh, as we've done it with Jeffco and DPS, um, we not only work with um, MIS classrooms, um, multiple, uh, multiple intensive severe needs classrooms, 
um, but also unified PE classrooms. Um, and for those who don't know what unified PE means, um, it's really where you have a peer mentor, um, a peer coach working with a student athlete. So naturally in that interaction, you've got a lot of collaborative um, uh, growth um, that is not just something that uh, happens in a self-contained classroom. Um, so it's a beautiful thing. Um, and uh, where am I going with this? So we came to Colorado uh, in 27, uh, 2018 and we had three contracts with Jeffco schools um, and several um, schools in DPS. Um, they're different in the system because one has a centralized Medicaid purse and the other one does not. Um, and we're in constant talks with other school districts, camps, day programs. We just completed a training with um, ability specialists, which is a day program um, in Denver. Uh, we trained their staff and program managers how to use um, self-regulation, coping strategies, uh, breathing strategies, and uh, isometrics, which is a form of being able to um, really delve deeply into proprioception, which is a um, knowing where your body is in space. So um, that oftentimes is something that is hard for even, you know, the common person to um, figure out, right? So um, it's, we really transcend disability um, and everyone has the ability to move through yoga. So can I get a thumbs up if you are following with what I've said so far about move through yoga? Cool. <laughs> awesome. Okay. If you have any questions thus far, please feel free to use the chat. Um, you can always email me. I'll put my email in the chat as well, as well as our email, as well as our website address. But here's the part where I'm super stoked to share what's coming up um, with Move Through Yoga. Um, do I have sharing abilities? Share screen abilities? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, the panelists don't. So the only only I do. Um, and here, I can actually stop sharing. Uh, sorry, I should have done that. I guess started your thing here. No, um, no, no worries. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Um, well, um, let me share with you. Uh, Corey, can I send you a quick email real fast while I have two seconds so you could share what I'm talking about? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Please hold. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Okay. All right. So one and two. Okay. So Corey, you should have these two attachments um, and I'll refer to them as I quickly speak. Um, it's coming in three, two, one, send. Okay, so coming back to the screen. Um, okay, so Move Through Yoga is really excited to kick off uh, Disability Awareness Month on October 2nd at Gold Crown Fieldhouse in uh, Jefferson County uh, off of Harlan Street. We are going to have over 400 Jeffco students um, participating in what's known as an adaptive yoga class. Um, we are doing this um, uh, as a way to bring all the participants who have uh, participated in Move Through Yoga, adaptive yoga classes before all together. Um, and um, we, after the yoga wave, after the adaptive class, we're going to have a resource fair where like-minded um, organizations can come and interact with um, our parents, educators, and students. 
Um, and so, so far we have um, everyone from Biddy and Bo Coffee to Pasco to, um, I'm trying to think who else, Feel the Beat. Um, and um, there's a sensory gym as well that's coming. Uh, so A, I'm putting it out there for you guys to volunteer. If you are able and willing to volunteer, I would love for you guys to come. Um, and anyone in the public who would like to volunteer, we have a little vetting system. So please feel free to email me. Um, and I would love to share more about the Yoga Wave, which uh, we have two co-hosts. We have Ryan Spillbores from the Rockies, um, who's going to be opening a, um, a, a facility um, that is uh, equally accessible and inclusive. And um, secondly, we're going to have Chris Lane, who is Miss Colorado Wheelchair. Um, she's also going to be there as well. Stephanie, you mentioned the yoga wave, and I feel like that needs a hand signal. There needs to be like a yoga wave, you know, <laughs> some kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Um, I will echo uh, what Stephanie was sharing. Um, movement gets me into wellness areas that I cannot get at other places. Uh, I can journal forever. I can take a pill. I can talk. Movement saves my life it's thank you just another way of being thank you thank you for saying that i i'm happy to hear you share that and echo that sentiment and i would love for you to come and be a part of the movement and the energy that is going to be there um i i did this in florida with over 1500 students um, on the football field before um, now it's shifted to become an adaptive uh class uh, so we're going to have a lot of unbelievable energy that day. So if you can make it, please come in any capacity that you can. Cool. Um, let me just check with Corey. What ability do we have to provide something in writing for folks to be able to follow up on what Stephanie just shared? Is it about a website? Is it about an email distribution? What ability do we have yeah, to so, empower people? Um, don't so I, I, share I got those, you. by the way, don't share those because I just realized I sent you the vendor one and I sent you the general one. Um, so okay. let me just interject for one second. Um, if you have a vendor who you think would be amazingly aligned with our mission and vision, please, please, like I'm trying to get in touch with family theater. I'm trying to get in touch with um who else am I trying to get in touch with? I really just want to bring everyone together. Um, so uh, if you have any other connections for vendors who you think would be a part of this, please like let me know. What I would what I would say here, so I did get your email, Stephanie. I won't, I won't, I won't share uh, what you're asking. Um what I would say is, Stephanie, um, if you want to invite people to reach out to you, that would be great. Um, I won't, I won't, I won't be able to, to send these out, anyways, right now. Um, but people can connect with you to kind of get this information. Um, does that sound good? Groovy. Cool. I I'll put in my in the chat my email and. Um, Again, I am delighted to work in partnership to elevate the mind, body, health, and wellness for those who are oftentimes overlooked in public school systems and or day programs. So that's just um, my contribution to our um, cause. Right on. Join me in giving a hoo-ha to Stephanie for being willing to be visible. Uh, when you're able to, Corey, would you put up the member spotlight uh, slide again, please? Yeah, give me one sec. Sure. Um, if you are a, a new member or perhaps an existing member and you would be willing to share your story, say hello, tell us about you and about things going on, 
then you can follow Stephanie's example. As you'll see on the slide there, um, a council member will be featured to tell some of their story, their history, their experience, and express themselves. We've had poetry, um, and we've had uh, movement, and we welcome uh, your voice. So if you are interested to be featured on a council member spotlight, please reach out to Corey, and we would love to chat with you. All right. Some love in the chat there for you, Stephanie. And uh, for any who might be watching the timing of the agenda, you might notice we're a bit off on the timing, but I think we're good. And we'll explain a bit more about that, uh, how we adjust with our timing. Um, Corey, do you want to adjusting the break time? So I was, I was about to say, so yeah, we're, we're, we're way off. Yeah, we're um, about 25 minutes behind. Yes. So I was going to ask right now if we wanted, if people need a break right now, we can do that now and then just kind of roll through everything else here. Uh, do people need a, would people like a break right now? All right, great. Um, I see, I see some head nodding. So why don't we take a break? I'm going to just move to this and we'll come back at 2.01. Sounds good. Five minute break. Thanks, Council. Ideas. We are taking a five minute break and we'll be back in about another two, two and a half minutes. This break time unofficial announcement is brought to you by planet Earth. We just had a harvest moon. Remember that full moon? Last night I was over at the community garden. I'm showing some beautiful multi-shape, multi-color tomatoes. And during my break, I'm going to eat a radish.
We'll come back from break in about one more minute. All right, then we'll restart. Go ahead, Corey. Yeah. Howdy, everyone. It is 201, so I'd like to kind of get back on it. I'm sorry. Um, I know we had plenty of time, but we used it. So we uh I'm gonna be a little more on the on the clock today uh for the rest of the meeting. So uh we'll move through here. Um for those of us at DHS that are saying anything, we'll try to move through kind of quickly. And so if we can, we're gonna go right into the update and approval of public comment policy. So as everybody knows, we have revised our public comments so that now they have to be, it, this was always an option before, but now is required that people have to sign up beforehand. To sign up for public comment, members of the public must email ideas at denvergov.org or go to our online public comment form and fill that out by one o'clock p.m. the day before the IAC meeting. So that would have been yesterday at one. The IAC secretary, who is me, uh, we'll then contact the co-chairs to review that comment and approve it. Any written public comment will be read aloud by one of the co-chairs. And then anybody, anybody who is making public comments should state their name, any organizational affiliation, whether they're a Denver resident, and then the comment that they'd wish to make. Commenters each have three minutes with which to speak. And so if you put in a comment, you then have three minutes to talk about that. Uh, please honor the time allowed so that we can hear as many voices that wish to speak as possible. As commenters speak, council members and guests will listen without response or interruption, and speakers must limit their comment to an agenda item or topic pre-approved by the co-chairs. Uh, I did say earlier that the comments will be read aloud. They can be read aloud by our co-chairs, uh, but people can speak to them themselves to during the public comment period, um, and hence all this information here. And so, uh, council members, what I'd like for you to do is to review this, deliberate for about two minutes if there is any feedback or questions that you have and then motion to approve these and I will then put them into the bylaws and then give them to Brian and Lindsay to electronically sign once the council has majority voted to approve them. If you don't approve them, I'm not saying that you have to approve them. I'm just saying this is the process that we're following now. And so for any reason, if you don't approve them or anything like that, uh, now is the time to speak on that. Thank you, Corey and team who helped put this together. Ideas Advisory Council, comments, questions. Update and approval of <clears throat> update and approval of public comment policy. Whew, I chewed up a pepper and it's coming back to chew me up. We're, we're, we're treading an interesting balance where we want to be open. Hey, public, community, come talk to us. And yet, some of us experienced recently or someone came to share with us and it was some really negative energy. And so how do we stay available to listen and interact, but also keep it safe? Okay, I'm not hearing, or go ahead, Beth. I like this a lot. I think it gives outline structure to stuff. And I mean, control can be a good thing. So it gives some control within the our organization without taking away anything from the person that's presenting. I think it's good. Thank you, Beth. Other comments? I would make a motion to approve. Okay. And who would like to second this motion? I can second it. Ms. Beth. 
And you know, you know my rule about that, Beth. You have to sing that. <laughs> so it's the way Motown works. I mean, that's what can you do? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris has approved. We'll do votes in the chat. Uh, passes. Thank you, Corey and DHS team that co-constructed this. Um, you you heard Corey mention that uh, Lindsay and I will electronically sign it, and that's because we are co-chairs. That's going to change in just half a year. So we'll be talking more in future meetings about sustainability and passing the tor torch and growing some other leaders. What's next? All right, Corey, you want to do this one? Sure. All right. Well, thank you all for um, getting that done. I know that sometimes our work is just a little formal and stuff. So that's great. Thank you for doing that. Um, now I'd like to talk about our meetings, which we have also kind of updated in response to the same events that kind of reinforced the need for structured public comment. And so as everybody knows, uh, we now meet on a webinar mode, hence why we are the way we are today and how we are promoting panelists and everything like that. Um, that does provide us security, but also a few other uh, benefits, including um, monitoring registration and being able to kind of easily take attendance that way and controlling chat spaces and things like that. What we're trying to do is provide an accessible space, but a protected space. We don't want to open up this space again in a way that it gets taken away or people are in any kind of way harmed. And so in response to that, we have changed our structure and I want to make sure that the council has a hand in determining how that looks going forward. Uh, right now, all guests come and have to register beforehand. We post that on our website. We post that on our agenda, which then gets sent out to our stakeholder email list and our advisory council members. Everybody registers and then we move panelists to their panelist position uh, who are our council members, as well as any guest presenters or anybody else who needs the ability to speak and show their camera or share a screen, perhaps. Um, this, this means that attendees cannot use the chat. Only council members can use the chat and share screens in this way. We make sure that nobody can take away screen sharing capabilities or utilize it to show inappropriate images or anything like that. Uh, we also do not allow the use of AI or third-party software on Zoom meetings. There is an asterisk with this. Um, if somebody is using some kind of software that promotes their own individual accessibility, they are welcome to contact me and request the use of that. Um, otherwise, if I just kind of see an AI bot or some other kind of odd uh, profile or software come in, I'll probably just disallow it and remove it. Um, so just keep that aware. Be aware of that. Sorry. Only panelists will be able to unmute, show video and, and chat. Pre-approved guests can also request to come off mute during public comments by raising their hand. Uh, only hosts will share screens. That is myself, Michaela, uh, Jordan and Lynn as needed. And then only United States IP addresses are allowed into the meetings. Um, this probably shouldn't come up too much for everybody, but if you're ever on vacation and you're trying to join uh, an IAC meeting from another country or something like that, you're gonna have to let me know so I can put you into Zoom to allow for that. If you're on vacation, though, I would say just take your vacation. I don't know why you're coming here. Have fun, you know. <laughs> but um, so those those are the updates that we've made. Um, what I'd like to make sure that we are doing is that we discuss those potential revisions and see how they feel for everybody here. Uh, I know that accessibility is important and huge. However, is antithesis, it is not, it's pretty much at odds with security and, and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm doing my best to kind of marry those. And I want to hear from y'all what you think about that. Um, and then also perhaps a consideration of a hybrid model in which we maybe we meet in person uh, where a virtual component is provided as an kind of added option, but the main meeting takes place with everybody in pace there uh, in one place. There are merits to that, but also I do understand there are potential difficulties with that also related to accessibility and being able to kind of come and do that. 
So at this time, what I'd like to do is open up the floor for you all to talk. It is 2.10 p.m. If I give you all about 15 minutes to discuss this, I hope that allows for enough time for us to then have the landlord and builder discussion, because then it will be 2.25 um, and then five minutes for forecast, if I'm uh, remembering my agenda correctly. Uh, so what I'll do is I will unshare, but please, if you need to reference these slides, let me know and I'll reshare. Um, but then I'm going to open it up for the chairs to kind of direct conversation about this. Thank you, Corey. We've changed some things. Talk to us. How are you feeling about this? What are you thinking? Technology, accessibility, availability. Haley, please. Hi, yeah, this is Haley. Um, I know I have a little less stake in this game with this being my last council meeting, but thinking about like for the future council, and I definitely, I think maybe this being a discussion again, once we have, once you guys have the four new members um, joining in, but I, I just want to think what I can share is my experience, at least with the hybrid model, is that I feel like when I've been in hybrid meetings, um, usually it's the folks that are joining in virtually that I feel kind of end up a little bit left out of the discussion. It's harder to keep up with. It's harder to chime in when you're kind of up against a group that's in the same room together. So I think hybrid is always nice to have the option, but I would worry about there just kind of being an equal um, platform for everybody to be able to share input and feel like they're contributing meaningfully and being heard. Um, Obviously, safety is um, is really important. Accessibility is really important too, and all the extra clicks to like register for a meeting, I think, do make a little bit of a barrier. But I don't know what the other option is to keep this a safe space as well, which is incredibly important. So, that said, I don't really know what the answers are, but yeah, I'm glad we're talking about it, and I think yeah, definitely talking about it with new members too would be important. Yeah, thank you, Kaylee. And what Kaylee just said really dovetails into what Corey announced earlier, that we've onboarded four new people and there will be an in-person meeting to deal with the forms and the questions and getting to know each other and then some a little bit of uh, social or informal time. Other comments, questions? Beth, please. Yeah, I'm there with Kaylee on that. Um... There's other committees I'm on, and one of them requires that you be in person. And if not, in case of emergencies, it has like a, a Zoom link they'll send you. Um, but if you don't require people to be there, it's like the other ones I've been on, eventually it dwindles off into almost nobody being in person. And so it's kind of pointless. And like she was saying, if it's hybrid, a lot of times the people on Zoom don't get ignored like purposely, but it's just like, they're just kind of there in the background because they can talk, but it's so, it needs so much more regimen to actually do that than in person. So I'm, I'm there with Haley on that. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Others. Lindsay, you don't have to, but you had some, I felt some valuable input about the, um, what is safe and how that can translate to different people in different ways. Would you like to share that? What? I had, like, what, did, what did I say? I can't hear you. Uh, I didn't quite hear what you said. I said, would you like to, I, you had some important views that you shared about how different people can view opposite things as that's more safe or that's more safe. Would you like to share that? Oh, um, safety, I guess. I think maybe it was about like safety and accessibility too, just that I think, oh, I think I know maybe what you're 
getting at, I think maybe you had mentioned that like, or Corey had said something about how like increasing the boundaries kind of kind of goes against accessibility, but um, I don't I don't think that that's that's like universally true because sometimes if you create a boundary or do things to help try to ensure a more safe environment that can actually um, increase accessibility. Obviously nothing's universal or 100%, but um, that can help people maybe feel more safe to join and participate when there are some, some boundaries initiated, you know, even just basic, um, computer security is, is a concern when we have like some of the, the bots and things um, rolling in and then um, having our emails blasted out afterwards, you know, that's a concern when a lot of us might be joining on like a work computer, it might be like HIPAA related info. So I think I was just kind of speaking to like, well, it might feel like it could be maybe thought of as a negative to increase some protections. It, it could also make one feel, you know, more able to participate, knowing that there are some boundaries in place uh, and steps that are taken. I, I do appreciate the um, additional um, steps that we've taken between the July meeting and, and the August. No, June, June and then July, right? Yeah, June to our July meeting. And then of course this one, um, I guess I'll just tag, tag on one thing. I was gonna mention just like a small thing, but with the needing to register for the webinar, I was wondering if it's possible to then have it set up where you get the link and like, um, like the reminder of the meeting with the link to the meeting that, comes in an email like beforehand. I know that often when I sign up for webinars, then I get that, you know, like at like 11, your, your meeting's starting at noon and then you have the link because I might be doing something wrong, but I'm having to kind of dig around to find where my, my meeting link is. But that might just be me. Thank you, Lindsay. Michaela. Hi all, this is Michaela. Lindsay, just to make sure we're understanding, are you referencing, um, so after you, when you initially register, which could be like a week before the meeting, you get an email from Zoom with a meeting link, but then you're asking if we could set it up so that on the day of the meeting, you get another email with a link and a reminder. Is that correct? Okay, perfect. Um, great, just wanted to confirm. I, you know, I think we'd have to look into that unless Corey, you know, offhand. I, I yeah, sorry, this is Corey speaking. Um, I'm I'm looking at like my Zoom capabilities right now, and I could I could manually do that pretty easily if I just hit select all and resend confirmation. So just like in the morning, I could just make part make that part of my work process. If there's a a setting that lets me automate it, I'll look to find that. Um, but that's kind of erroneous for all. Um, I can do it. So I'll, I'll, I'll make that part of just like my thing that way. Cause I, I understand like the links can probably be hard. And so if I float it to the top of your inbox, it's, it's probably a little easier. That's kind of been one of the biggest barriers that I've noticed is like the, the links are becoming kind of difficult, but um, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that. Cause all I have to do is go select everybody who's registered uh, resend confirmation email and it should go to sim literally everyone. Um, and so that just requires that you just make sure you register before the morning of uh, when I send out that reminder. Thank you, Corey. At this time for timeliness, we'll do a, a vote. We'll do it in the chat by voting members over by voting members only uh, for approving or not the public comment process. Yes. Oh, hang on. We already voted on that. Yeah, we oh, did we, that. Oh, we did that. Oh, what am yeah, I doing? That's done. We're just on our discussion of meeting structure. Oh, that's right. Delete that off the chat. You're good. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, what I guess so, uh, maybe to help, what I would ask is. If anybody else 
could maybe weigh in on whether or not an in-person meeting would be difficult, how they'd like to see that run, or if the council would prefer to keep it virtual fully, like, like totally virtual in this webinar format, um, then we can that discuss that and then maybe motion to go one way or the other. Uh, Chris, I would totally love to invite you to maybe speak on, on if you would rather stay virtual or if if there's any kind of thing that on in your perspective that would make it either better or worse to have it in person. And maybe with best considerations of if we have it in person, maybe we require it so that there's attendance and we try to work on how people can be engaged if there's a virtual component. Um, knowing Chris as I do and asking him a few questions just now, um, I think that he most likely would be up for either, but I can certainly say that um, it is a bit more cumbersome to have to be in, in person. Um, you know, it causes a lot of, you know, uh, anxiety, you know, not knowing where we're going, what we're doing, how long we're going to be here. Um, and so having the virtual, pre you know, um, availability for him um, where we can still remain in his own home um, in his familiar setting, I think is ideal. Um, but I, I'm sure that, you know, if necessary, that we could make in-person meetings as well. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Council members, um, if you maybe want to discuss the possibility of virtual or in-person, now also knowing Chris's input there, I'll leave it to you. Mrs. Lindsay, um, I would just say, um, I think I forgot, but I was meaning to echo too, like what Beth and Kaylee had said, I find hybrid meetings to be kind of like the least preferred option. I give it has to be in person, then at least you're all on the same page. Um, I would definitely prefer virtual because it's just a lot easier when, it, I mean, particularly when you're in the middle of the workday, it, it adds like a whole new element could be potentially not even possible um, to attend a lot of the times. Um, so I have to just take off and, and go somewhere to meet in person. So just my preference would be um, virtual, in-person, hybrid in that order. Other comments, thoughts? Here's an experience that I'll share a couple of them. One is um, hybrid meetings are exhausting, and yet they do increase access. Um, Rocky Mountain Human Services, I recently joined the Community Advisory Council in person, and it's just it's a, it's a whole nother level of humaning, a whole nother level of community. And for those that could not do it in person, they had the ability to come in on video. And I think it's important to ask this again after we've onboarded four new people. So somewhere in the next year. Oh, which Lindsay just, hey, great minds. <laughs> Kaylee. I wonder, um, I think it sounds like most of us have the same concerns when it comes to hybrid meeting. I wonder if maybe a solution to that would be just to be very thoughtful and intentional with how hybrid meetings are run and just really ensuring that there's space given for those that are joining virtually so that they don't feel kind of overlooked or anything. Um, yeah, I think if it if it is determined that hybrid would work the best for the council, the new council going forward, then I think um, just being again very intentional with how those are run so that everyone has the same amount of time to share and be heard, then I think it could work. Thank you, Kaylee. This is Corey. Yeah, I, I came off mute because I know you probably can't see my hand there, Brian. 
Um, but thank you all so much. I do very much appreciate this discussion. I've taken notes from everyone here on like what's kind of preferred and where we're at. And what I'm hearing is this is a worthy conversation to bring up again when we have our new members who are will actually make up a pretty big bulk of the council. Um, and then we'll discuss it again with them and, and maybe go from there. So what I'd like to do now is table this discussion and move on to the landlord and builder assessments. So, but that was very, very fruitful. I know I kind of mentioned a vote earlier. That's okay that we don't have one. Uh, that was actually super, super helpful for me. And thank you all for sharing how you feel about every part of that. Uh, so right now, um, Jordan, I'll leave it to you to take it away. Thank you, Corey, for the handoff. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay, so everyone just see the landlord and builder slides. Perfect, thank you. Um, so as, as mentioned, we're here to kind of continue that conversation we had in July um, following the presentation from the Kelsey on their work on this landlord and builder assessment. Um, you should have all received the, the formal report. It is a bear, about 40 pages long. So if you didn't read it, that's okay. Um, I would really encourage you to look back at the slides from last meeting and the minutes from last meeting to if you need a refresher on what we're talking about. If you have the report handy, um, these recommendations that we're talking about today are, uh, start on page 29. Um, and, and we'll look at all of them in more detail here on these slides. So to start, I wanted us all to kind of go back a little bit and look at what we have already recommended, what the council has already recommended to ideas. Um, and this, this ha happened to be during uh, 2021 um, after another report that was published, the Inclusive Housing Report. Um, and um, you all made seven recommendations, as you can see, the ones in green are the ones that IDEAS has implemented. So the first one that's in green, create a housing navigation program. As you all know, um, we executed a contract over a year ago with Bayard Enterprises to do this exact program. Um, so in September, it'll be a year of them providing this type of service. And we look forward to hearing from them, hopefully in October here in the council to kind of present on the outcomes and things like that. The second one, investigate and identify landlord and builder concerns with renting and creating housing for the IDD community. This is um, the direct recommendation that resulted in the landlord and builder assessment that was just published. So um, before we could even look at how we engage with people who build housing and people who provide housing, um, we really needed to understand their perspective. And that's what we're here today to talk about and seeing how we can fit some of these new recommendations into the scope that we're already working through. And then the third one that's green is that housing becomes a priority for mill levy funds. Um, as Kaylee mentioned, in the last three years since receiving this recommendation, um, really a lot of our investment and our time has been focused on housing. Um, and, and you can see that with these meetings, we often are talking about housing and also some of the programs that we've we've funded. So um, we're, this is kind of where we are at right now. Now, if we take a look at the new set of recommendations, you will see, um, we also have seven from the Kelsey. Um, and so um, one thing I wanted to point out, we'll, we'll look at each of these in more detail on the next slide, um, but uh, there we go. One thing I wanted to point out was if you look at the first recommendation from 2021, incentivize builders to create IDD inclusive housing. This was originally put on hold because we knew we needed more information from developers and from landlords before we could move forward on this. And as you can see, the first two new recommendations from the Kelsey directly did tie to this idea of incentivizing builders. Um, and so now that we have more information and something that's a little bit more detailed, a little more direction on where we can take something like an incentive, we can kind of look at those now and see, um, see what's coming up for you all. 
And then one last thing I wanted to point out here is that we do have some overlapping recommendations and that's okay. Uh, the first one is um, both then and now, the recommendation to offer more housing vouchers for people with IDD um, exists. And, and we know we've heard this multiple times. We know it's it's a huge need in, for the community. So it's it's not a surprise, right? That it's still, it's still out there, um, but it, I just wanted to point it out so you all are aware. And then um, as you can see that Kelsey also recommended doing uh, creating housing navigation support. Um, at the time, uh, you know, the Kelsey had said a lot of the folks that they engaged with weren't aware of they would be home. And so for that reason, I think it's relevant to keep it open here and, and we can think about it a little bit more broadly rather than a direct service, right? Because we are providing that service, but if folks aren't getting access to it, what does that mean? And what can ideas do to kind of better uh, create that access with the programs that we fund? So let's, let's look at all of these in a little bit more detail. The first one, increase availability of operating subsidies to support service link projects. Um, and so, like I said, this is talking about an, invest, an, an incentive for housing builders. One thing that the Kelsey heard a lot was that oftentimes properties with folks with IDD don't have services on site where they can really truly feel supported in the in the where they live and feel like they have people they can go to when they need help navigating their lease, um, being a good neighbor, those kinds of things. And another problem or gap is the fact that when a housing builder wants to consider building housing and creating a budget, there's often no funding sources to support that built in those built in services. And so the Kelsey was really recommending that ideas offer money to these builders who wanna provide that type of service in their units um, that also house people with IDD. Second one, local funding incentives and enforcement. Um, and so again, here it can get quite complex again. The best way to describe it is really that um, when a houser, housing builder wants to build affordable housing, they are looking towards local, state, and federal dollars to kind of support that, um, that budget to be able to build something like that. Um, and oftentimes when you are um, applying for that type of money, the more you can show that you can build cheaply, the more likely you'll be awarded those dollars. And so what happens is accessible features within units often get discarded or not even thought about because it's considered more expensive and they don't have room to fit it in their budget. And so this recommendation was really about um, creating additional funding for builders to offer accessible features within their housing, like uh, wide, wider doors, like drain holes, like uh, lower countertops, like grab bars, those types of things that will be universally helpful for everybody that may have additional costs attached to it. Um, recommendation three, as mentioned, um, increase the availability and use of vouchers to support integrated housing. Um, and so the Kelsey is really emphasizing that if, if we were to fund something like a housing voucher, which is basically a certificate that allows um, payment of rent um, for, for a tenant to, to move anywhere they would like within Denver. And so they were really emphasizing to use vouchers that way so that folks with IDD had a voucher on their person and would be able to take that voucher to any apartment that they choose to live in to really promote those integrated living environments where people with and without disabilities could live amongst each other. Recommendation four, as mentioned, um, this is about housing navigation. Um, they had said that not many of the, the residents they had talked to had heard of Bayad B Homes Housing Navigation Program. So the Kelsey really recommended that we should focus our efforts on advertising this program a little bit more widely so that um, more people can identify that this is a service they can access. Additionally, I think there's other ways we can look at housing navigation and related in relation to maybe navigation at specific residential properties or things of that nature. And so just keep that in mind when you think of that recommendation. 
Recommendation number five, educational support for property managers to understand and support people with IDD in their communities. So one thing that the report talks a lot about is the fact that landlords, although willing, um, they often don't have the tools or the training to be able to um, fully engage with residents in ID, with IDD in a, a trauma-informed way, in a way where communication is clear, in a way where um, they feel like they're being supportive to their tenants and things like that. And that Kelsey said that there was an appetite for some sort of training for these landlords to help them better be able to support and engage with our IDD community. Recommendation six, require the use of plain language and leasing documents for affordable housing projects. So um, as we all know, I think anyone knows if you've ever signed a lease, um, half the stuff is unexplainable to anyone who doesn't have a law degree. <laughs> and so I think just how complex the language can be, can be difficult for anybody to understand what they're applying for, what the rules are in their lease, what demand they're getting on their door, what other notices, those kinds of formal communications that come from landlords. Um, and this recommendation is saying it doesn't have to be that complicated. Let's require that they use plain language so that it's a little bit clearer, a little bit more simple, so folks can truly understand the expectations of what's being communicated to them. And then lastly, recommendation seven, um, to fund a IDD pilot housing project. So the Kelsey was really saying like, we could go all in and implement all of the above recommendations into one big project. Um, and we can support in multiple ways, maybe by, by buying land, maybe by paying the fees that builders often have to pay to the city when they go to um, build. Um, or maybe supporting them and in, in engaging with the community to truly identify uh, what would be most helpful um, to incorporate into these properties so that it's um, community focused and safe and collaborative um, and any all of the above, right? And so that could go um, many different directions. Um, and yeah, so these are the seven recommendations. What I'm really hoping to do now is um, give you all the space to really talk about these um, amongst each other. Um, really, I, I would love to hear what's resonating to you, what feels super cool, what maybe doesn't feel as cool, um, what your gut is telling you. If you have any questions, I'm here to support. Um, and, then, and then we'll move on to a few other pieces of this, but let's just save this space here to chat. And I can leave this slide up if that's, preferable for you all give me a thumbs up or down on that one yes please thumbs so that, up so okay. that we can refer to to the to the seven recommendations in the simplified version as we're so uh thank you jordan and now what's important to you community what's how are you feeling about what, what you're saying here Department of Human Services is not asking us to be housing experts. They actually have teams of those. We're here to share from our lived experience. Beth, please. I think the recommendation number seven is really, <clears throat> excuse me, is interesting of doing a pilot project just because it could be incorporate multiple recommendations inside of that and just kind of see what happens since this is I mean it's not new new but it's decently new on this level and that's just I'm always into options so I think that's really cool yeah thank you Beth other comments what feels like resonates or what's important to you? Kaylee. I think that the first two recommendations are sticking out a lot in my head as a way to start um, build, you know, making more housing available and making housing available that's accessible, that's desirable, that is ready to serve tenants with IDD. Um, I think 
I mean, all of the recommendations, it's hard, it's hard to choose. I think they're all great. And I'm glad to see that their recommendations aligned with, you know, things we've already recommended and are, are seeing as well. But it feels it, one and two stick out to me as ways to really start like building up the available housing to folks. So, so it's feeling like low hanging term. fruit. What's that? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What you what What did you say? Sorry. I think right now what I see a lot with folks is that they may have a voucher, they may be looking for housing, and just what's out there isn't again accessible, desirable, safe, any of those things. And so I think really tackling some recommendations that seek to solve that issue a little more or start building that up stick out to me a lot. Okay, thank you. Um, in an effort to understand, um, I was saying, so I think what I'm hearing you say is this is low hanging fruit, like this is readily doable. Is, is that accurate for what, what you were commenting? Um, I wouldn't say it's the low hanging fruit. It, it probably actually is more of the long term, like complex of the recommendations. I feel like I feel like some of the easier ones that are are just as important, but I think could be implemented quickly are like the plain language, more of that educational support, more of the funding to advertise Bayard's program. Um, those see easier seem easier to tackle to me, whereas yeah the. The first two seem to be um, a little more difficult, but I think important to really get at the root of some of the issues we see. Okay, thank you for clarifying. So go big, long-term. All right, other comments? Beth, please. Um, I also think number three is interesting in the fact of, because um, I talked to my housing navigator here at my apartments, <clears throat> And she had mentioned about a, a NED voucher for my son and I for moving on to the next step in our housing program. Um, but then she said, well, we haven't had anyone come and offer any of those in three years here. But if something becomes available or they offer them, then your family will be the first one to get one because we're the only ones really that have that need. Um, so it'd be, I think, more research would need to go behind the availability and what's out there and the knowledge of it and then the actual incorporation of knowing what is out there and what resources like the Chelsea and all that can be linked to those things and actually know about both of them or all of them into one like entity idea. Just my thoughts. You said into one what idea? Like one idea, like it, like you're thinking of something and you automatically think of another thing that goes with it, like connecting the dots between the two of them. You think of like a net voucher or some kind of voucher. It's like, oh, well, this person is behind that or maybe we can look into this company because I know that they have associations with them. Does that make sense? Thank you. This is Brian B. And, and I'll say that I was connecting with what Kaylee was saying. Um, and it took you being here, Kaylee, and, and voicing up for me to realize, like, for example, for just myself, I have a voucher. Um, I have a housing coordinator. I don't understand either of them. And there's a fair amount of fear and, like, and, and, and each time another year of renewal, the standard renewal happens. I'm like, oh God, I have I have a roof for another year. I don't know how that managed to happen. And what's that level of fear about? And and, and the accessibility, you know, it's it's been very challenging to even just get a response from my housing coordinator at times. So, uh, yeah, there's just some of my uh, experience. And I know that's just me. I, I know I've heard other people uh, with IDD 
um, or other dis and or other disabilities, and they understand their voucher and they know how to work the system and 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 be happy with their housing. I'm not saying that's a lot of people, but I have heard that. It's just not my experience. Other thoughts? All right, we'll keep keep processing. And now we'll invite Jordan to come uh, share with us a bit more. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for all of your input so far. Um, this is extremely helpful um, and, and we'll get to it. But I do, I do just want to say that um, we can, uh, you all can endorse all of these recommendations or none of them or some of them. Um, you don't need to pick and choose if you like them all, like great, let ideas <laughs> take it from there. Um, but um, one of the things that the council chairs had recommended we do is just provide a little bit more context and similar to what, what you were saying, Kaylee, about, um, you know, how easy or difficult some of these might be. Um, and I just want to start by saying, regardless of whether or not they will be difficult for us to address, if you truly like the idea and you think it could be really cool for the community, don't let the difficulty um, deter you from making a, the recommendation um, because that's really the point, right? Is to, to get your voices to us and then we can do that investigation and that research and then we will always follow up if it's determined that something isn't obtainable um, or, or if it is. So, um, but, but if it's helpful in, in your decision-making, if you look at the right side of this slide, you can see where some recommendations are a little bit easier to the best of our you know, this is get us guessing. Um, some may be easier than others to do. And then some are gonna cost more money than others, right? Um, and in particular, I think, as Kaylee mentioned, anything that has to do with, with incentivizing developers may be a little bit more uh, of a, a bigger lift for ideas because this is something that is, is already um, happening in agencies outside of DHS. So we would have to engage with the Department of Housing Stability um, and perhaps community planning. All that said, it's not totally out of the question. And, and I think we feel energized by that challenge, um, but it, it may be something that may take, you know, a couple of years to move through. Whereas something like training for landlords um, could be something we could probably work on um, relatively quickly with the resources that we have right now. Um, and so we'll just maybe 30 seconds to a minute to kind of digest this slide. Um, one thing I'll mention about the vouchers is that, yes, not only is this overlapping, but we have looked into vouchers. It's still on our radar. Um, one thing we want to explore first is that the state has already kind of implemented their own pilot for people who are on um, who are determined to have an IDD and working through an SLS waiver. Um, they're they're doing like, like a small portion of folks um, in that that little um, group to to receive these vouchers from the state, and um, they're really working on getting that. Uh, out to a larger community. And so um, we we really wanna take advantage of that first before we would look into what vouchers we could fund locally. Um, but it's still an important thing that's we're always considering. Uh, Beth, go ahead. I just wanna <clears throat> add something to recommendation one about it looking like it says uh, difficulty and lots of money. I think it's really more doable than what it appears to be only because my apartment complex, they just are, well, they're finishing up building like the second stage for supportive housing. And like, I live in transitional housing for single parents. Well, they just, they're finishing up one that is support services. It's like the in-between of affordable housing and being homeless kind of thing. And there's mm -hmm. anything in Denver anywhere that's that, but they're, 
basically at the brink of starting to add on more of that kind of stuff. And the affordable housing of Denver, they're the ones who granted that land to my apartment complex to build that specifically for supportive services. Awesome. That's, that's really cool to hear. And, and I think you're right. Like, um, this isn't, ha this isn't something that's not happening. Um, permanent supportive housing is, has been a thing in, in the homeless field for a while. Um, and, and outside of, if you're homeless, it's, it's kind of less so, but I think, um, it's starting to build and people are recognizing that. So I don't think like the buy-in would be the biggest issue would be more so like, us connecting to the right folks within the city to let it make it happen. Any other thoughts or questions on this slide? Oh, Lindsay, go ahead. Oh, I can't wait if you were. Mm -mm. I just wanted to try to clarify a little bit um, how we would tease out the difference between one and two. For sure. Um, so they're they're very similar because both are offering dollars to housing builders or developers, but they're for different things. So the first one would be like, for example, right, um, a property there. Uh, a developer wants to build a property with two hundred units, two hundred apartments, um, and they want a a full time concierge for folks that live on site that have IDD and they don't have the money to support that person's salary. So that could be an example of us kind of funding that service type of gap. Um, for recommendation two, um, it would be more so like the builder wants to ensure that all of the apartments in the building are built with universal design, meaning that it's an access, they have accessible features in the property, um, but they're, cost to do that or their budget doesn't align with the cost to do something like that. So we would pay for like the access accessible features inside specific apartments as an example. Um, does that help, Lindsay? Great. Jordan, this is Michaela. Mm -hmm. This tripped me up a little bit too. For number two, this would be creating accessible features like an above and beyond what's required by federal law, correct? Correct, yeah. So, yeah. and actually the Kelsey, if anyone's ever has the time, they have um, on their website a, a huge, I think it's like way too long, like a hundred pages full of, of examples of what specific or what specific accessible features you can incorporate into units that go above and beyond like ADA requirements or federal requirements um, and how to do so in a way that's like financially sound and you know it, it supports everybody whether you have IDD or not um, and so those are would be like the kind of things that we would um, perhaps support with a recommendation like this. I'm so sorry to interrupt everybody. This is Corey speaking. I'm just going to jump in real quick for a time check. It is 2.53. We have seven minutes left. Um, so just keep that in mind as, as we keep going. Thank you, Corey. Um, Kaylee, I will let you pass it over to you and then we can move on. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to say, I think if I'm if there's one recommendation that I, I have more pause on recommending immediately, it would probably be number seven. Um, and it definitely falls on the scale, the higher scale of, you know, being very difficult and being lots of money. And it almost feels like it's too big to be feasible right now. And that maybe implementing the other recommendations as well as the current efforts already being made would eventually like get us to that place. But I, I just don't, it feels like yeah, it almost feels like too big of something that I wouldn't feel good about immediately recommending and putting effort to when I think we have a lot of good steps through the other re recommendations that kind of lead us towards that path eventually. Those are great comments. Lindsay? I would agree and not because I don't think it would be a great thing to try, but I almost feel like prioritizing and potentially implementing some of these other recs could also be considered a, a pilot project in and of itself. 
particularly like pairing one, two, and five. Because I, I don't know that one and two could be implemented well without five. Like, Very good point. Do we want to maybe, um, since we are at like five minutes, do we have a few or how many would, what do you want us to um, yeah. talk about in terms of like prioritizing? Great. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I, this would be my, my biggest ask. Do you want to adopt any of the recommendations as formal recommendations? It can be all of them. It can be specific ones. Um, for the sake of time, if we don't have a few moments to kind of prioritize, although I've heard a lot of your comments and I think that's helpful too. Um, but if you, if you have any like quick things you want to say about prioritization of some versus others, that would be great. Um, but really the, the most important is kind of like that motion to adopt um, any of these or all of them. Um, and so I'll put this back on the screen and then leave it to you all. Let me start by talking with uh, Lindsay, my co-chair, and then we'll open it up uh, more broadly. Lindsay, do you feel like we're in a space now to motion to adopt or make more time for more processing and come to formal votes on another time? Well, by adopt, are you just meaning to be able to mm -hmm. research further? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm sorry, could you maybe go back to the, the last slide? Are we saying adopt all and then giving the few that we want to prioritize? Yeah, um, if, if, like I said, I think I think the prioritization might be a challenge because that might be a larger conversation. But I think if there's any like, absolutely, no, don't, we don't want to recommend this one, that would be most important. And then if if not, let's motion to recommend all of them. Um, and then we can continue to have conversations around prioritization uh, following that. I mean, I would make a motion to adopt the recommendations for further research. So all seven of them, Lindsay, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, this is just meaning that they will be researched further. It's not like we're we're implementing. Mm -hmm. these. Mm -hmm. So that I would make that motion, yes. Um, second. This is Kaylee. I'll second that motion. You have to sing it. Sorry, it's your, that's your exiting debut. Uh, you got <laughs> one song out of me once, and that's going to be it, Brian. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Then we'll go for a vote right now. The vote is in the chat by voting members only, and it's to um, the motion that Lindsay put forth is, is that this council would say we recommend all of these, which puts them all at equal priority. Whereas another time we may want to go through and spend more time to not equalize them at the same priority for them to right. be able to we can prioritize. further prioritize this just allows jordan to be able to research them further okay great i think that's a yes awesome job y'all i'm so excited to dive into all of this work with you and um, continue to to build this these efforts to create more inclusive housing for Denver. Um, and, and of course, we can continue to have conversations along the way. Um, happy to talk offline too, um, if you have any questions about the report in particular. That being said, I think I pass it to you, Corey. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, thank you all. Um, appreciate that conversation. Appreciate all the work doing that there. Um, and there's no public comment today. And so now we are just on to forecasting our September 24th meeting. Um, does anybody have anything that they would like to ensure that I include for next meeting's agenda? Lindsay, um, I think I'd like to revisit the, I think 
what was it? Um, what's the B um point B? And they had recommendations, and we had talked a number of times about um, you know, just like uh things related to websites and just um materials related to IAC. I think some of that could also tie into things that we would be doing with housing and like oh. education and all of that. So just revisiting that topic. Yeah. Are you referring to ground floor media? They're the ones who help us with like marketing and stuff like that. Is that, is that what you mean? Or, or... yes and no. I mean, it doesn't have to be that. It, it's something that we've brought up as a, as a priority and a talking point multiple times um, as a council. And then I believe ground floor point B had also had recommendations related to that too. So trying to get that back on the table. Okay, I'm noting that. Okay, I'll put, I'll schedule time for that. Anybody else have anything else? Right. Brian, oh, yep. and the folks that are doing the Inclusive Housing Coalition, I, I'm, I'm interested in them coming to this council to tell us more about uh, their work. Anyone else interested in that? I don't know if we have time now to consider that, but maybe throw a slot for that for a future meeting. Yeah, I've, so I've noted that, um, and we can maybe reach out to them. Maybe I'll look to draw in to um, help with the connections there. Um, but can't guarantee anything because that's obviously a third party there that would have to agree. But yeah, you know, we'll, we'll we'll explore that. In addition to them, generally speaking, about their all of their work to come back here and share about the the event that will have happened uh, by the time that they're here, the, the training. Okay. All right. Noting that too. Got it all in my notebook here. Okay. Well, if nobody else has anything, you can always just reach out to me later on if you think of something or if something happens between now and then. Um, keep an eye out for the invitation to our in-person orientation that we'll have with the new members. Uh, that won't be a public meeting. That'll be a private meeting for orientation, uh, spell out in our bylaws, and just a way for council members to kind of meet the new, the new folks and welcome them on. And with that, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for doing the work today. Uh, we did a lot in two hours, so I very, very much appreciate it. Thank you, Kaylee, for all your work. Uh, Thanks, thank you, Kaylee. Thanks, Miss you. Do we need to do a motion to adjourn? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, second. And Are those in favor? Put vote in the chat. To adjourn. Great. Right. Thank you. And conclude. Thank you all. Thank you all. We are adjourned thank at 303. You. And thank you so much, Kaylee. Good luck and feel free to join us whenever you want. I'll be around. Bye, cool. guys. Is that um, uh, Shay? Are you working with Shay? I sure am. Oh, <laughs> sibling power. Get it. Yes. <laughs> so I'll definitely be around. <laughs> All right.